Hunting Midnight Monsters, a single story told three times in three ways. One. The moment I was carried into that room, I knew why I had been sent. The odor of, of monsters immensely strong, particularly under the bed. Now, I've dealt with my fair share of monsters, so I pretty much knew what to expect. Your basic assortment of scaly skin slashers, using eyeball eaters, and snatching gobblers. But things aren't always as they seem. I've been at this monster hunting business for a while, and I've learned how to stay alive. Information gathering. So instead of herring off after monsters the moment I was set down in the bed, I decided to have a chat with the locals. Excuse me, miss, I said to a likely-looking pink kitty who had been lounging on the pillow. My name is Bear, Teddy Bear. I hear you've been having a few monster problems around these here parts. Kitty flicked her tail a little scornfully, as if she considered herself above such petty things as monster hunters. I just waited. I knew she'd talk. She was obviously a vain creature, most cats are, and I had spotted the snag in her pelt. There was only one creature in the world who would have made a snag like that. A yellow-bellied picker. Yeah, they had monster problems all right. You want to talk to Bow Wow, Kitty disdained to say at last. Now, if you'll excuse me, I was in the middle of a nap. She hadn't been, but I left her to it. I had bigger fish to fry, or bigger monsters. It didn't take long to spot Bow Wow. His bedroom had your typical structure, because the oldest folks were clearly in charge. Bow Wow was a brown and white dog with floppy ears and the look of someone who's been to the washing machine countless times. Howdy. I said. You must be new in this house, Bow Wow replied, eyeing me warily. What brings someone like yourself here? Good grief, said a yellow duck from beside him. Is the kid getting hand-me-downs now? I bristled slightly at that. Sure, I may not be in the best condition, but it's not from getting hugged all the time, I can tell you that. I was sent about your monster problem, I said. As a good thing I was, you've got a whole nest down there. Obviously, snarked Yellow Duck. What do you plan to do about it? I smiled a little. People often forget, because my fur is soft and my ribbon worn, that I'm not just some sort of cuddly creature. They forget that I'm a bear, one of the most powerful animals on the planet, and no one's pet. Well, our plan, I said, is to take them all on and kick them straight from here to the end of the rainbow. What do you plan to do? Enough, Bow Wow interrupted. This stranger's come to lend us a helping hand, and I dare say we need it. What do you want, friend? Just information, I said. Anything down there I need to know about? Bow Wow hesitated for a long moment, exchanging a glance with the yellow duck. But eventually, in a lowered voice, he said, we don't know. All we've ever heard is a name. Bad. A few of us have tried to find out more, but none of them have ever come back. Sound like fun. Besides, it was my child now, and I wasn't about to let some two-bit monster crunch it. Don't worry about it, I said. I'll take care of it. That monster was going down. Two. The moment I entered that room, I knew why I had been sent. The rancid stench of monster rose from beneath the bed and behind the dresser and through the crack of the closet doors. I shuddered. I've dealt with my fair share of monsters, but I don't think I'll ever get used to them. There are all kinds. Monsters that rip, monsters that shred, monsters that tear. But in the end, they're all the same, really. I've been at this protection business for a while now, and I've learned a few things about how to stay alive. Have something to live for. So I crept up the length of the bed and looked down at the sleeping child. It was quite young, younger than I'd expected, with pink lips and masses of curling hair. It half woke up when it felt my paw against his cheek and pulled me into a tight embrace. Tell me what you need, I whispered to the sleeping child. Tell me whom I need to fight. The child exhaled a soft sigh, and with it a single word. Bad. Bad. That was the kind of name given to monsters when children were very, 
very young indeed, when their imaginations were at their peak, uninfluenced by culture or agenda. Those were the most single-minded of monsters, intent on only one thing, devouring their child. I wouldn't let that happen. Gazing down at the child, I smiled a little. People often forget, but with the profusion of other toys, that all children really want is simple protection. Forget stuffed robots and cartoon characters and glass-eyed dolls. There's nothing as fierce or as loyal or as true as a teddy bear. And I will keep you safe, I promised. You're mine now. I'll take care of you, no matter what. I unsheathed my claws, leaned over the side of the bed, and waited for the monsters to come. Three. The moment I entered that room, I knew why I had been sent. The tantalizingly sweet scent of monster billet out from under the bed, coiling up around the child and sending sticky tendrils into its dreams. I've met a lot of monsters in my time. Some of them are about what you'd expect. Mindless killing machines, ravaging killers, psychotic death mongers. But when you come down to it, monsters are just regular folk. Some are weak. Some are strange, and some are admirable. And just like anyone else, they follow certain rules. I've been at this monster business for a while now, and I've learned how to stay alive. Know thine enemy. Know him so well, that he becomes your friend. I slipped off the bed to the floor before the mindless fluffies could spot me and crawled under the bed. It was dark down there, dark and comfortable. Your typical garden variety of lurkers were hanging about, nothing to worry me. I could always kill them later. I grabbed one around the neck and extended my claws until they dug in. This is my territory now, I snarled. You want to make something of it? The monster, the yellow belly scuttler, swiftly declined. Then tell me who's in charge, I said or I'll break your neck. I released the scuttler, and it collapsed, wheezing. Give me a name. Bad, it wheezed. Bad. Show me. The scuttler scuttled before me, leading me to the back of the bed. As I went, I took careful note of my surroundings. This underbed clearly had your typical structure. The oldest folks were in charge. It was easy enough to spot bad when I realized this. He wasn't formed quite right. A monster created of the mad, half-formed fears of a toddler. Immensely powerful, no doubt. Unfocused. I could take him. This room is mine, I announced. Mine, bad replied in a guttural growl. The shadowy thing which might have been its face split, and long arms reached toward me. I smiled a little. People often forget, because we're fuzzy and adorable and for children, that teddy bears are just as much a product of a child's terrified imagination as any monster. We're the creatures which fight off the nightmares and win. We're the ones more frightening than the frights. We're the ones who watch children sleep until they grow up and forget about us and abandon us. And then we keep watching them forever. And ever. The child is mine, I whispered, and unsheathed my claws. The End